You get ready to go, everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Afternoon, everybody. Um, first hello. and foremost, I must. Oh, hello. First and foremost, I must read. Um, may I remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live via the internet and a recording archive for future viewing. So, just a little bit of housekeeping. When you're not talking, please would you mute, mute your microphones and uh, obviously switch it back on when you are asked or wish to talk. Um, if you've got any problems and I don't seem to be taking any notice, please send a chat or a question and I'll try and uh, do my best to get round to you. Um, so after all that then, we'll start with apologies for absence. Uh, Ian, were you going to give Nick's apology? I was going to say I've just uh, received a message from Nick saying he's struggling to get in. So I mean, hopefully he'll be able to um, to join us. But if not, I'll I'll give his apologies now. He's clearly trying to. So we'll see what goes on there. Okay. Well, hope hopefully he'll come in. But um, if we don't hear from him all meeting, we'll um, log his um, apologies. Uh, no other apologies from anybody. No. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, right. You've all had the minutes of the meeting. Are you happy that I sign them as such? Yes. Yes. Can I have a proposal and seconder? I'll move. Yeah. Thank you, Margaret. I'll second. Yes, suppose. Neil. Yeah. Neil seconded. Thank you. Okay. Uh, agenda three is to receive declarations of interest. Uh, any declarations anywhere? No. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, just seeing that now, um, Gordon is not on, is he? Um, Leighton, do you know if Gordon's coming on? Um, I believe he was, um, Chair. He may be having connection issues. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, we, um, we are underway so i will hand over to ian robinson who is gonna um introduce the first planning application for us and it's 2020 00741 reg 3 land to the north of the railway roos ian over to you thank you chair uh, this is a full planning application for a new school um, at land north of the railway line in roos uh, it's worth noting that the school already has outline planning permission as a consequence of the um, the, the planning permission granted in 2015 for the residential development that surrounds it um, and that that parcel of land we're looking at now on the plan was allocated for the school um, this isn't a reserved matters application linked to that outline it is a standalone full but it remains the case that that outline permission is in place um, the new school building would be located towards the northern portion of the site uh, fronting onto Roos Way um, it's approximately 48 meters uh, wide by just over 10 meters tall uh, the school would have a capacity for up to 210 uh, pupils plus 48 nursery um, and it's envisaged that there would be 23 staff. Um, vehicular access to the site would be from Roos Way in the northeastern corner and that would give access to um, a parking area of 17 spaces. It would be a, uh, in, in one way out the other, so um, both onto Roos Way. Uh, a new three metre wide footway would be proposed along the front of the site, which would connect to um, the footway at the northwestern corner and would theoretically connect to um, footway on the eastern side of the site if that residential parcel is developed. That land to the east uh, is also allocated for housing. Um, it's not come forward yet, um, probably will in, in, in the next few years, but um, at, at the moment the, the Roosway terminates at the eastern boundary of the site. Uh, drainage proposals are uh, a series of kind of suds features, including an attenuation basin and a, a detention basin, and um, like a, a pond and wetland in the southeastern corner, uh, and then um, drainage ditches on the, the eastern boundary and the western boundary. Uh, yeah, I think that summarises the main points. If anyone's got any uh, questions. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, right, questions, please. Who would like the first question? I can see Andrew Parker asking. Andrew, if you would like to ask your question, please. Yeah, just seeking clarification as to 
you said the houses, I know the site is partially developed, which is the site where, where the houses haven't been built? Is that that's to the south, is it? Uh, no, the, so to the south there are dwellings and to the west and north it's the east. So the, the, the development all around the site is Taylor Wimpy. Um, as it stands, the development to the, uh, sorry, the, the land to the east is Persimmon Homes. There is a planning commission on that land to the east, um, but there are issues with the landowner, um, which mean that 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 development hasn't come forward yet. Um, we would envisage it would at, at some point in time, but the the, the development's been reported on the basis of there not being a link um, and on, on the basis of that land being just a field. Is Sorry to come back. That land is in the local development plan though, am I correct on that? It, it is, it's allocated and there is and there is a planning permission, you know, a specific layout has been approved on that land. It's for reasons outside of our control that it hasn't come forward yet. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, Christine, please. Uh, un unmute, Christine. Can Hello. you hear me now? Can you hear I me now? I can now. Yes, Christine, thank you. There's a little bit of delay there in um, unmuting myself and being heard. Um, but I am out here in Landau, so I'm not surprised about that at all. <laughs> I, I'm just going to say, um, I've had a, a few concerns. Uh, firstly, my major concern is that as a committee, uh, we're not able to make um, site visits in the presence of uh, planning officers. And I think that makes it, you know, I understand some of the reasons why that hasn't taken place up to now. But I am wondering if going forward that is something that we could possibly start to uh, reintroduce. Because certainly on this application and the next application, uh, where there are highways issues, and I do believe there are road safety issues, highway issues, uh, car parking issues with this particular application, I do think it would have been very useful if the committee uh, could have gone down and made a site visit so that we could have had some understanding from uh, the planning uh, officers as to how we were going to mitigate some of the road safety issues here. And um, with that in mind, I'd actually like to propose that we defer this proposal until such time as we can have a site visit. Yeah, I think Vicky's got um, going to come in now and give us a bit of advice on that. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. OK, great, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're doing our best at this difficult time to minimise the risk to um, our staff and to members and to members of the public. And, um, you know, we have looked at and discussed uh, the ability to undertake committee site visits and we feel that it would really be too risky to do that at this point in time and difficult to do that at this point in time for uh, and to achieve the correct social distancing measures in place um, you know at times when we go to these committee sites there are a lot of members there are a lot of members of the public and we would be um, obviously attracting a crowd so what we've done instead we've tried to um you know say to members look if you want to undertake a site visit before the planning committee you obviously know what's on the agenda with plenty of warning you can go and have a look at the site yourself you can phone officers and talk about any issues that that you're not clear about or that you want further explanation well in advance of the committee and we've also sent members um copies of photographs of site visits you know as a sort of opportunity to kind of draw your attention to the same issues that we would draw your attention to on site so if I can refer you to the, um, the I'm sharing my screen still I believe so if yes. I can these were circulated to members in advance of the committee but I shall just pull down to the photographs so if we have a look at this site in question um, perhaps Ian if you can jump in and, and explain what's in each photos for members Yep, so the, the um, top one is the highway outside the site. Uh, I'm getting it. So that's that's the road frontage sorry. along the... That's right. Sorry, Vicky, could you turn your mic off? Is this I'm hearing echoing? Oh, fine. Um, yeah, that's the road frontage um, uh, on, on Ruth's Way. Um, if we scroll down, can you scroll down further? Uh, that's just the adjacent uh, play area um, and the, the road sweeps around to the right to go up towards the exit. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the houses to the south of the site. 
that we're looking from the western boundary here yeah and that's a view across to the site from the eastern boundary from the public right of way and the following photo is where the road terminates at the end of uh, Rooseway at present. So you can imagine that road uh, would continue through um, with the implementation of the, the, the persimmon development if it happens, and those footways on that road would continue through to the other half and come out at the eastern part of Roos Point. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I take your point, Christine, but I, I think we are doing everything we can at the moment. And... Um, I know um, these schools issues are time limited. Um, we've all got budgets and things. So I think, to be honest, we've we've had the information. We have had the opportunity to drive there ourselves if we want. Um, so I, you know, I, I I think we've got enough here to debate and make the decision. Any, Any further questions? Yeah, yeah, Ian Johnson. Sorry, sorry, Chair. I, I could see that, that Councillor Cave wanted to come back on that point. I don't know if that's appropriate first before moving on. Uh, uh, yeah, Christine, did you want to come back on that one? Yeah. Yes, I, I did, Chair. I just uh, want to point out that site visits typically take place outside. And um, I think that uh, as a committee um, of responsible people, we would be well able to have site visits uh, in a safe way. And I particularly think that site visits are really relevant in the, the, the cases that we're looking at, uh, planning applications that we're looking at today. And I, I do see the photograph, uh, the photographic evidence that we have, um, but I remember that the last planning application um, that we had uh, for Bonvilston uh, for the uh, building on the village green. And I think you will recall um, that the photographs didn't do uh, justice to the actual site. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, reticent, reticent to um, look at the photographs and then be able to make an yep. opinion. And I think what you but say... You, Christine, I, Christine, I, I, hang, on, yeah, hang on a minute. Uh, you are entitled to go there and drive there yourself, albeit a non company. Yeah, that's what I was, just yeah, that's what I was just Anybody about has, to say. has had that opportunity to do that. I did say last meeting that, you know, at any of the meetings, you're more than welcome to go along um, on your own to have a look at any site we're talking about. Yeah, and I, I think what you say there, Chair, and I, I, I do agree that it is important for us to go along and do that. But even more, well, I think it's important for us to do that when there's the safety of children. And there are road safety issues with this application. Um, there's parking issues, for example. There's, the the uh, report suggests that there's not enough uh, parking there. Uh, the other part of the site hasn't been developed. We don't know whether that will be developed or when it will be developed. It certainly could, you know, it could be 10, it could be 20 years, who knows? But it, I do think it would be, it, from my perspective anyway, sitting on this committee, it would be very useful to have had a site visit, even if it was a loan site visit, just with myself and a planning officer, uh, for me to feel satisfied that I understood exactly what I was being asked to agree to. Well, I did say that at the last planning committee, if anybody wanted to visit the site prior to any of the planning committees, that, that you are entitled to do that. Mm -hmm. Whether we would be able to get a planning officer to come with you is another thing. Um, but I think, you know, everybody's had the opportunity to go down and have a look if they're unsure of the sites. Um, so I think, you know, with, with the photographic evidence and you've had your papers uh, earlier than normal as well, but I think everybody's had the opportunity, but uh, Ian, you wanted to do Ian Johnson? Can I come in a second, if I may, please? No, no Andrew. No, Andrew. I, I asked Ian to come in. <laughs> just going to say, we might need to refer to uh, change between Councillor Johnson and, and Ian Robinson, just to make sure we know which one's being called. Yes, Jeff. sorry. Yes. The, the queries that, uh, that, that I had were with regards to drainage on the site. Uh, if I remember the previous uh, planning application for this site, and more generally in the Roost Point area, uh, drainage has been a, a major consideration. And I'm not sure that uh, I've received quite as much uh, information you know, sort of within the pack here as, as I would anticipate. Uh, I did ask uh, if it was possible for somebody to uh, from the, uh, the relevant department to come and speak to us today. I appreciate I did that at fairly short notice, so I don't know uh, if that was possible. Um, but obviously the, the, you know, the area is 
uh, is cited on a gradient uh, and I'd like some, some fairly you know specialist information as to how the uh, you know all the different sort of water is is going to be dealt with <coughs> and where it went up because uh, the last thing I, I want is um, to see a scenario where uh, anything goes wrong on this site and, and impacts on, on on the you know the residential areas um, that are mm. further south closer to the sea. So I, I'd appreciate a, a bit more uh, information on that from the officers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Ian. I'll ask um, <laughs> Ian um, to come back on that. And I'm not sure, Mike, um, whether you have any detail on the drainage or not. I, I find it unlikely, but uh, if you've got anything to say, Mike, I, I welcome your input as well. But uh, if we go to Ian next. Yep, yeah, fine. Um, just on the first point, so I, I did try to contact the drainage engineer, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, to get in contact with him at, at the at the notice. So um, you've got me, but I think I can explain it in in the necessary detail. Um, so the drainage is in in two parts: it's surface water and foul. Um, so in respect of foul, members will note there's a condition which refers to reinforcement works. Um, the response we had from Welsh Water suggested that the um, sorry, I'll go back a step. When the outline permission was granted, um, there was a condition that there needed to be reinforcement works to the foul system to enable the um, the necessary um, flows to be accommodated. Um, when we consulted Welsh Water on this application, their response suggested that those they believe those works hadn't taken place yet, and consequently there's a condition requiring um, those works to take place before the school can be occupied. Subsequently, um, the council's education section have been in touch with uh, Taylor Wimpy, who would have been responsible for doing those works, and also Welsh Water. Um, and it's their belief, that, <coughs> excuse me, it's their belief that those works have taken place. Um, I was waiting for confirmation of that today. I haven't had that confirmation, so I couldn't tell you hand on heart those works have definitely taken place. But uh, we're not prejudiced because there remains a condition which requires those works to take place. If they have been done, then it will be a fairly simple matter of those details being submitted to us in, in discharge of that condition. Um, so I'm happy that that's, that's covered by that condition. Um, in terms of service water, um, there's, a, there's a series of suds features through the site. So um, the parking area has got eight, eight, uh, eight co-drains um, at the curbs, um, and they lead to storm sewers. Um, and then if you look on the layout plan on the computer, those three um, or three or four sort of lime green shapes on the eastern part of the site, um, they are kind of a series of attenuation basins and detention basins and um, a, 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 a potentially a pond in the southeastern part. Now that, and there's ditches along the western boundary and the eastern boundary. Now those are all a, a series of features which will enable water to infiltrate um, and be stored and it, and it kind of um, throttles back, if you like, the flow of water off site rather than it being r running off at, at kind of normal runoff rates. Um, it, it would be almost unheard of for a development like this to have absolute detail. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting quite a lot of repeating. No, that's better. Um, no, that sounds okay to me. It's, it's better now. Um, uh, yeah, we, we would we would almost never have absolute finite detail of the drainage scheme at the, the point that we determine the application. Um, the best we'd ever usually get is a drainage strategy, albeit I would say the drainage details with this application are, are fairly detailed. They don't just say um, it'll be on the principles of infiltration, they actually show a series of specific features and specific parts of the site. Now approval of this scheme will fall to um, the council as the SUDS approval body. Um, so it, it, it really, strictly speaking, is not a matter for planning condition. The reason for this um, SAB you know, legislation and that process is to effectively take that away from the planning process because it, it is better considered by um, by, by the, the, the relevant professionals as part of the SAB process. Um, obviously, we need to have a sufficient degree of comfort that the, the scheme in principle is acceptable, uh, and our drainage engineers have, have raised no issue whatsoever with the, the principles of the scheme. Um, it's just that through the SAB process, it's possible that some fine detail of how that water is dealt with might change. It might be that the, um, the uh, capacity of, of, the, of an attenuation tank might increase or might decrease. It might be that the alignment of a ditch might change, um, but the, the, the core principles are, are set out, and it's a it's a kind of a, a modern studs approach to development. Okay, thank thank you, Ian. Um, Mike Clog, I don't know, did you want to come in on that at all, Mike, or not? 
Uh, yeah, I don't mind saying a few words. Um, I probably can't add too much detail to what um, uh, Ian has provided in relation to the uh, the regime for uh, surface water drainage. But I suppose the one thing I would reassure um, is that if my drainage team haven't raised any specific concerns as yet, uh, then uh, they tend to look at things pretty thoroughly. Uh, and if um, you know they would raise something if they thought that there was a there was a concern. And they would normally raise something to me as well to identify a specific issue. Uh, and that hasn't been the case at the present moment in time. And again, as Ian has said, there will be a thorough uh, or a requirement for an application under, uh, as part of the uh, SAB approval. Uh, and that will be a detailed application and all aspects of the drainage uh, will, be, uh, will be interrogated. And, and we will need to ensure that uh, surface drainage is dealt with appropriately. Uh, before any permission is given, and that will be a separate process to uh, to planning. So on that basis, I I, I think probably the um, drainage is 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 likely in hand, and there's other other uh, recourse to uh, to make sure we get uh, suitable uh, surface drainage at the site as well. Thank you, Mike. Um, now then, I've got a couple of people who've asked to speak. Leighton is first, um, then Mark Wilson, and then Vince Driscoll. Uh, and I see Gordon has just joined us as well. So um, I'll go to Leighton next, please. Uh, Leighton, would you like to ask your question? Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Um, so my, I've got a few concerns in relation to the highways, and in particular, vehicles who, you know, will be picking up their children doing U-turns in, in, you know, in the residential area. You know, as someone who lives by a school, not in Roos, but by in Barry. Um, a lot of traffic does tend to generate around the school. And if you're asking more than to find in um, to sort of do U-turn um, in the street, it will be absolutely chaos. Um, like Dr. K said, we don't know when that new development um, to the east will be developed. It could be 10, 20 years. So you know, these the residents will have to sort of you know, deal with this for a long time coming. Um, I just want to ask a bit more detail from Mike because he does mention that you would expect the school to sort of monitor the peak times and stuff like that. Would you do you have any more details how they would do that? Because you know, like I said, I live by a school um, and well by Jenna Park and it's chaotic um, and it has a road to to sort of access and it just has one way in, one way out. I just wanted more clarification there. And I would second Councillor Cave's deferment um, on, on it, you know, not going to the site. I think it is beneficial to have a planning officer there at site um, so we can sort of look and, and they can explain bit items to us. Um, I know, you know, maps and photos, you know, you know, do sort of help. It doesn't do it justice. So that was just my point in relation to the um, parking issue but also the surrounding area and then how this is going to affect the residents around that particular um, okay Leighton, I, I, i'll ask mike to come back on those <clears throat> and on the site visits i mean it's legal advice and health advice that we're given that we are we shouldn't be doing site visits and and, and, and until we get a, um different advice unfortunately we're not able to do it so uh, uh, as i've said in previous times you are more than welcome to go a lone trip on your own to go and have a look at the site and that is the best we can do at present I'm afraid but uh, Mike if you'd like to come back on um, Leighton's points please. Uh, yeah just to make a comment that um, there is a turning area provided at the end of um, Roos Way uh, it's a sort of hammerhead uh, turning area uh, which will be available for um, uh, uh, pairs to turn round in. Um, obviously, there may need, need, may need to be some consideration as to how that area is protected so that parents don't park and obstruct that, that turning facility. Um, so that, that, that is available um, at, at this tall or as part of the development um, and would assist in the turning movements. Um, I suppose I, you know, I, I'm not sure how they would uh, undertake any any monitoring. That would perhaps be for the developers to put that that detail forward. 
Um, but um, th there is a, a concern from my highways team in relation to uh, to drop off and pick up in the area um, uh, due to the uh, amounts of traffic that the development would um, generate. Thank you, Mike. Um, right, the next person was um, who is next? Um, John. Hang on. Um, Ian wants to come back in on that a second, so I'll let Ian come in, please. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, just really a, a, a short point, just to say, uh, yes, we've had the um, a dialogue with um, with Mike and Mike's team about the the highways issues, and also with um, our education colleagues. Um, there is potentially scope for um, drop off of junior uh, pupils within the site in the morning. Um, that's there needs to be probably a further dialogue on that, but the the in, the in and out system could potentially accommodate that. As um, you, you'll note from the report, probably less scope for that to happen in the afternoon when parents um, would be arriving to pick up rather than just dropping in and leaving. Um, it is it is likely well that the highway is going to be the the place where parents are going to be dropping off and picking up on the whole. Um, there's, there are conditions relating to parking management strategies, and that is designed to allow us to have a, a further dialogue with Mike's team and education about the best way of doing that. It will also fall largely to the school to, to monitor and enforce. I mean, it's it, Councillor Owens is correct in that schools are busy places in the morning, um, more so the morning and the afternoon because of the nature of, of peak hours. But ev you know, everybody has a responsibility. You know, that's the school, that's parents. Um, and, and everyone related to the development to to try and ensure that what what they do is responsible and and, and safe. Um, you know, whether that's the school promoting through the travel plan, um, you know, increased awareness of other modes of, of transport to get to school to try and deter sorry deter um, everybody from driving, or that's just giving directions to parents about how to behave when they are dropping off and and best practices in terms of um, getting in and out of the highway. Personally, I don't see it as being a fundamental highway safety issue. Um, it's, I think there's potentially you know, a free flow of traffic issue, if you like, when, when cars are turning in the highway, albeit um, it's a dead end at the moment, so that's not going to affect a significant amount of residents in, in the estate. Um, it's a very sustainable location, and there are genuine alternatives to other than driving to get to the site. Um, it's, you know, it's the sort of place we should be approving a school. It's an urban area, and it's in the heart of the catchment that it's serving. Um, you know, it's gone to the days of, of pro uh, providing, you know, huge car parks to meet maximum parking parking need that's not the the direction of planning policy um, and we should be trying to encourage people to behave in different ways um, and whether that's um, driving as little as possible car sharing walking site um, and appreciate that that can seem like a um a, an overly optimistic perspective sometimes and uh, but that is that is what we have to do and if we don't try to promote that kind of thing and if we just provide more parking we're going to do nothing to, towards, um, towards changing mindsets and actually in, in, in encouraging a more sustainable way of, of, um, of traveling to sites. Um, so our view is um, we you know, fully appreciate Mike's concerns about um, drop off and pick up, but we think on, on, on balance, the highway network can accommodate it. Um, and, and that's why it's recommended for approval. OK, thank you, Ian. Uh, right, I've got Mark Wilson next, then Vince, and then Gordon has indicated he'd like to speak. Uh, I know we're halfway through, and then Andrew Parker. Um, so, um, Vince, if you'd like to come in next, please, Vince Driscoll. Hello, I thought you want me first. Uh, oh, sorry, yes, no, Mark, sorry, yes, I'm jumping down my list. Sorry, <laughs> Vince. Don't Thanks, worry, Mark. don't yeah, worry. Go, go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. All right, network, network well issues, page 14. I'd like to um, draw people's attention to page 14. What I'll draw people's attention to is the fact but I can't believe that in 2020, we still haven't got a crossing, a proper crossing above the Roost Point. Why do people have to rely on crossing the road at a railway junction in 2020 in Roost is a disgrace. We should have built one by now, along with Network Well. And really, you should be pressing Network Well to build a bridge, a pedestrian bridge, so people can safely cross the railway line here. Given the expansion of Roost over a number of years now, it's been going on for a long time, it's about time that the, the electorate of Roos got that as a priority. And I know the fact you're saying that sustainable transport contribution is not enough. I'm making a general point here that I think applications here, we're looking for expansion this point, they really should be a crossing above Roos. I really think that's 
very vital. And the other point I like to draw people's attention to on drainage on page 15. Um, point A in particular is about the Porthcurry sewer pumping station. Um, the volume has that been um, constructed yet, or are we still waiting for further plans? Okay, a couple of questions there, Mark. I think Ian is in a position to answer both of those. Uh, Ian, over to you. Yep, um, on, on Network Rail, um, Network Rail raised issues again with relation to um, pedestrian movements across the line. Fundamentally, it's not a matter of this planning application, and that's not to say that um, Councillor Wilson's points aren't, aren't appreciated and that in an ideal world there would be a crossing there, um, but it, it, it's fundamentally not for this application. If if something were to have been delivered associated with the developing of, of these sites, um, that would have been secured at the outline stage. Uh, there's, there's already a school approved here. This is just a detail of the layout. So um, just to clarify, we, we couldn't possibly require that as part of this application. Um, I, I'm advised by my um, my colleague, our section 106 officer, that during the consultation on spend of money associated with that outline, that the level crossing wasn't, or sorry, a crossing wasn't um, identified as, as a priority. And my understanding is the monies wouldn't have covered it anyway. Again, that's not to dismiss um, Councillor Wilson's concerns, it's just to give clarity to how that fits into this, this debate on this application today. Um, on, on the second point on drainage, um, yeah, I'm advised that capacity has been improved in the system. Um, uh, I can't say for members that's definitely the case because I haven't seen evidence of it. I'm told it is, but we're not making a decision today based on an assumption that that is the case. There's still a condition which assumes it hasn't been, um, and that's and that says that details have to be submitted of um, work, of uh, appropriate reinforcement works for the system, um, and the school can't be occupied until that that's taken place. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mark, I'll go move on to Vince Driscoll now. Vince, it is your time this time. Well, thank you, John. Um, my question's been asked and addressed, so no problem. Thanks. Move on. Okay, thank you, Vince. Uh, Gordon, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I've listened to what um, Ian has said, Ian Robinson has said, and yeah, if we lived in a perfect world, I would agree with everything, but we don't. Um, what we are looking to do here is we're going to end up with cars doing U-turns in the road, people will park in the hammerhead, they will park everywhere. You need to go, only need to go to any school in the Vale, look out, look there in the morning, look there in the evening as to where parents park. Parents want to bring their children as close to the school as possible. The roads will be chaotic. You need to look at the existing school in Roos now where we have parents who drive their children to school. If they can't find a parking space on the road, they will park in people's driveways. They will park across people's driveways. They'll park wherever they can. And I think an idea of trying to put the responsibility for managing parking onto the school itself, again, is not going to work. Schools have more important things to do in their view than managing parking. They try to manage parking at the existing roof school, it doesn't work. Go there any morning, go there in the afternoon and look at what the situation is. The problem we have here is that until the second part of land north of the railway line is developed and there is a through road, we're going to have this issue. It's wonderful to say, you know, this should be done, that should be done, but it unfortunately is not going to happen. Now, I apologize that I missed the beginning of this meeting. I had issues connecting. I don't know if the issue was meant addressed by anyone of, it, it says in the report that the site or that the, that the site could, uh, provide up to 200 pupils. Is that figure on the basis of the second part of land north of the railway line being developed? Because I think if, if it is, then, we're going to be an awful long time before we're anywhere near capacity at school and we're going to have difficulties now and then we'll have further difficulties, albeit hopefully to some extent alleviated by the, um, the road going all the way through into the second site. Picking up on what, Councilor, uh, on what Mark Wilson said, yeah, a crossing would be great, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, there's, been, there's been a push for this ever since I've been a member in Roos. They're always told the cost 
it's very large and it and it's just not going to be feasible to have one built and certainly section 106 money would not not cover that so as i say my concern is the, are the traffic issues and in particular leading from that the safety of children and that has to be our paramount consideration here we don't want a situation where a child is seriously injured or worse because you've got parents turning in the road and much as parents love their own children, they seem to pay little attention to other children in the way they park, in the way they maneuver, and they're taking children to school. So for that reason, I am very, very concerned about this application for that reason. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, I'm sure Ian would like to come back in on some of this. Um, Ian, over to you. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Just on those figures, yeah, those are figures that I was given by um, the council's education section. My understanding that that is that 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 does cover uh, both parts. So that that would be the the, the dwellings that are being built and and the persimmon persimmon side of it. Um, I mean, the positive would be that if the if the capacity is not um, if, if, sorry, if if the school is not going to be at capacity until that development is built, um, then the issues aren't going to be as as great as they would be with the school at full capacity in terms of um schools having the, the kind of the mindset to actually monitor and try and enforce these things my own view i think it depends on the site and i think it depends on how much appetite they have to do it i mean i've i've witnessed schools with you know equivalents of, of banksmen outside being very good at monitoring um and and enforcing parking restrictions um the the site we um sorry the committee considered some months ago at um, St Paul's Avenue in Barry when I was doing one of my many site visits there um I witnessed um member staff in you know yellow high vis jackets kind of marshalling um cars to to monitor certain issues and I can only assume that's in response to issues that have arisen over time and the school have taken it upon themselves to actually take some responsibility for that um so I, I can't say that happens in every school but I believe that there is scope for that to take place Okay, um, sorry, I, I just had a whip off and um, have a quick chat with somebody. Uh, okay, um, next I have Andrew Parker and after that I've got Ben Gray. So Andrew, would you like to come in now? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, picking up on uh, uh, Council Christine Cave's point, um, I, I've had this information for some time and actually I obviously remember the original LDP provision that was approved for this particular scheme. And it strikes me that 60 or 70% of the housing allocation has already been built. So to deny those children the chance of a education in a, a, in a modern school uh, would, would certainly cause me great concern. Um, I do recall with regard to the Wimpy site that we actually had a visit there and the drainage was discussed at length. And clearly that has been satisfied and resolved because that development is now virtually being completed. So on that basis, I would actually move officers' recommendation. Okay, thank you, Andrew. I don't think you need any comeback on that. So I'll ask Ben to come in now then. Ben Gray, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, um, I'd like to second off the recommendations. I think this is a fantastic resource for the area. Uh, it's got that outline permission previously, um, and I have listened to the debate. And certainly, if there are parking and other issues, these could be managed through highways controls in the future. I did have one question about the plans that were sent out, and that is that the external lighting control philosophy plan. Never thought I'd say that sentence. Uh, it seems to show a different site layout. Is is this from the outline permission? Uh, as opposed to uh, the, 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 out, the you know the, the full permission that's being sought now, uh, it shows the car park in a different position, and um, it's talking about the lighting of the site. Yeah, that's the one on screen now. Uh, that was just what, what, one one just housekeeping question I had. Um, and uh, I mean, obviously, we moved this. I don't know if we're discussing the deferment. I'm I'm vehemently against deferring. I think we've had a great amount of uh, of opportunity to see the site. If this wasn't something that had outline permission already, I'd be a little bit more cagey about it. Uh, but the principle of having the school there has already been considered, presumably with the site visit. Uh, we have the plans. We've had extra plans. Uh, we've had the photos. Um, I've taken the opportunity to go down and have a look at the site, as I'm sure other members have. So um, if we're debating that, I, I, I can't support the firm and, and that's why I'm seconding officer recommendations. Do you need uh, anybody to come back to you on any points there? Uh, oh yes, Ian about the plan, sorry. 
It's fine. Um, yeah, that I think that's an earlier iteration of the oh, layout that I, I believe was the subject of the original um, pre-app consultation that was carried out publicly. Um, but through the through the the course of the the normal design processes, that that's changed. Um, so it, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, I think we've had pretty much all the questions. So we have a deferral proposal from Christine, and I believe Leighton seconded it. So we're going to have Margarita to take a Margarita had a hand up. Oh, Margarita, did you oh, want to come in? I have had my hand up at least half a dozen times, Jonathan. Yeah, sorry, Margarita. It's very difficult for me to see, especially when Vicky's screen sharing. If if we could lose the screen share, I can see people's faces a lot bigger then, but you're about two millimetres high. Oh, that's better. Right. Um, not, that Margarita. Make, not that I want to make a point of this, uh, Chairman, but uh, you can see everybody else. No, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're texting me, actually, Margarita. They're using the text document and that's how i've taken note of them so you're quite entitled to use that as well if you wish right okay then i will next time um yes thank I you it does make to, life a little easier i just wanted to say that i'm concerned about the name of this school this school is in the roost point area and it's called Lancarme primary school it's like a school in, in barry being called dennis powers primary school um I would like to see the name of the school really deferred until the new governing body is established. Margarita, this, this, is not, this is not a planning issue with the naming of the school. We're talking about the design and the layout and where it is, not, well, it's, not on, its name. It's on, it's on, it says, on the plan, it says Lancarven Primary School. Yes, I, I know that, but that's not part mm -hmm. of the application, the name. The name actually is dealt with by Cabinet. Uh, and if you want to challenge the name, you're more than welcome to do it through the Cabinet process. But not through the planning process. We 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 don't, you know, it could be named anything. It doesn't make any difference to the planning application. I'm sorry, I but, but um, actually, I, I think it's ridiculous to call a school in Roos um, Lancarme. I think there's a reason for that. Perhaps it's to fool the parents of the pupils in Lancarme school that their school is not being closed. They're just being moved. Okay, Marguerite, I, I, I take your point, but as I say, the naming of the school is not a planning issue, uh, and it's not what we're here to do. So, thank you. Um, so, we will go on to the proposal for deferral. Um, so, I need now to come through and take your votes on this, and I will ask you by individual whether you're for or against the proposal to defer. So. Um, Ben Gray, would you give me your vote, please? Sorry, I was uh, waiting for alphabetical order. Uh, I'm against deferral. Okay. Uh, Rhiannon Birch, please, what would your vote be? Rhiannon, I'm not hearing you. You seem to have frozen. Mark? Rhiannon, could you tell me what you're, whether you're voting in favour of a deferral or against a deferral? Against. Against a deferral, thank you. Yep. Uh, Chris, Christine, you proposed it, so I'm guessing you're going to vote for the proposal. Christine Cave, yes, thank you. Uh, Pamela Drake. Against. Against, thank you. Um, Vince Driscoll. I didn't hear you, Vince. That's because I didn't speak. Um, I'm, for, I'm for a deferral. For a deferral, thank you, Vince. Stuart Edwards. For. Thank you, Stuart. Um, we haven't got Nick Hodges. He hasn't come on. Um, Ian Johnson, could I have your vote, please? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what would be gained by having a deferral, um, so I'll, I'm going to vote against one. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Gordon Kemp. Four. Thank you. Andrew Parker. Against. Vote against. Uh, Leighton Rowlands. For a deferral. And uh, Neil Thomas, please. Against. Okay. Margaret Wilkinson, please. Against. Thank you. Eddie Williams. Against. Uh, Mark Wilson. 
Muted. Mark, you're muted. Against. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Margarita. For. Thank you, Margarita. And I will vote against. So uh, that is clearly um, uh, against the deferral. Uh, so we now move on to, um, we've had a proposal and a seconder for the officer's recommendation. So I'll start again with Councillor Ben Gray. Are you for or against? For officer's recommendation or against officer's recommendation? I am for officer recommendations. Thank you very much. Uh, Rhiannon Birch. For. Thank you, Rhiannon. Christine Cave. Uh, Christine, you're muted, I believe. Could you say again, Christine, please? I didn't catch that. You must be still muted, are you, Christine? She's saying again. She's saying again. Yeah. Yeah, I think she is, but I would, just for the sake of clarity, I would like to hear it if I can. Christine? Uh, she's dropped off. Okay, well, we'll take it as an against. Am I still here? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you again now, Christine. Is that an against? Yeah. It's an yeah, against. Thank you. Yeah. Just, yeah, just thank you very it. much. Uh, Pam Drake, please. For officers' recommendations. Thank you. Vince Driscoll, please. Against officers' recommendation. Thank you. Stuart Edwards. Abstain. Okay. Uh, no Nick Hodges. Um, in Ian Johnson. Mm -hmm. In favour of the officer's recommendations. Okay, thank you. Now, Gordon, can I just clarify? You came in late on the thing, but you did say that you heard all of the debate. I, can you just clarify that for me? I, I've got to be honest, I can't say I've heard all of the debate. Well, yeah, thank you for your honesty, but that does mean that you aren't really allowed to vote on it if you haven't no, heard I, all the... No, I appreciate that. No. Okay, thank, thank you, Gordon. So that, that no vote either way then. Uh, Councillor Rowlands, Leighton Rowlands, please. Uh, against the officer's recommendation. Against. I missed out Andrew Parker. Sorry, Andrew, could you give me yours, Four. please? Yeah. Four officers' recommendations. Thank you. Neil Thomas, please. Four. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Margaret Wilkinson. Four. Okay. Margaret, sounds like a game of golf, doesn't it? Eddie yeah. Williams. <laughs> Four officers' recommendation. Uh, Mark Wilson. Four officers' recommendation. Margarita. Against officers' recommendation. Thank you very much. And I will vote for officers' recommendation. So that is four against, one abstention, uh, one non-vote due to uh, coming in. So it is clearly carried. Um, thank you all for that. Now, um, could I ask you, most of you are pretty good on muting and unmuting, but a couple of you are a little slow to mute again. Uh, I know it takes time, but it does cut the interference and the background noise out. So if you're not asking a question and not speaking, please can you mute. Uh, and we will now move on to the next item on the agenda. And it is uh, St. David's Church in Wales Primary School, 2020 00742 RG3. And I think Ian Robinson is going to present on this again for us. Ian, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, there's one matter arising on this application, and those are the, the comments of the Council's Highway Development Team, uh, which raise concerns in respect of um, level of staff parking and uh, implications of additional traffic as a consequence of the larger school um, and a, num a number of other technical issues raised, um, which are, are dealt with by conditions, but in, including kind of um, lining and within the car park and things like that. Um, so this is, uh, unlike the last application, a, a full application for a new primary school. Um, the difference here being that this is the site of an existing school, um, albeit this would be larger. So as context, the existing school um, has capacity for 140 pupils and 14 nursery. The proposed school would be 210 plus 24 so that's an increase of 80 could you just bring that back a second 
the yeah so the the plan on screen currently is the proposed school so it's almost identical in size to the last one that you considered um just as a point of detail i, I would say to members that uh there's a condition relating to materials um as i shown at the moment the building is buff brick at ground floor and render at uh, first floor um i'm not happy that buff brick is the right material in this context in colwinston um so there's material uh, sorry a condition to allow us to bot bottom out the specifics of, of materials so if members are concerned at all about materials um we, we still retain control over that um whereas the school at the moment is towards the northern part of the site the new school would be in the sort of southwestern part of the site um giving space for the car park uh, to the north and kind of areas of play um to behind the school to the east the development would involve the removal of six trees, which is a few centrally within the site and a couple on the northern boundary near to the car park. Um, vehicular access to the site would be broadly the same point as the existing school, and that would lead to a car park of 24 spaces, of which I think 20 have been identified for, uh, for staff and three visitors one for the kind of a minibus drop-off. Um, also as part of the application, it's proposed to um, construct a new pedestrian footway along the western side of the carriageway, um, as you can see on the plan there, with a new crossing point between that footway and the school on the eastern side. That footway would link to um, a car parking area adjacent to the community hall or village hall. Um, that is an area that does take parking at the moment, but the proposals would involve that area being lined and laid out more formally, uh, which should increase the kind of the efficiency of how that's used and, and therefore the capacity of it. Um, it doesn't. There's no um, formal play courts or you know, multi-use games areas, as we call them, um, within this site. Um, so there's there's informal play on yards and grassed areas, but sort of sports provision would take place on the the field on the other side of the road, which is uh, as as is the, the existing situation. Okay, Trip. Yes, thank you, Ian. Sorry, I was just um, having a quick look. We've got late representations on this, and Ian has mentioned, or oh, did you want to? enlighten us a little more or not Ian? that's fine no, i think i covered the um the, the late wrap I, I can i can run through the photos if members would like and um, we've got photos as we did for for ruse so the top photo is just a uh, yeah i think it would be helpful if you could Ian, please okay great uh the top photo is an image of the um of the existing entrance into the site so in the the, the new the new uh, the new development would be would be served off the same point. Um, scrolling down, that is a view towards the site from Hale Kaipush, which is the new residential development that's just been built just to the north and east of the site. Uh, that is the view looking southwards along the highway towards the school and the the, um, the vehicular access point. The, the new footway I referred to would be on the right hand side of that photograph along the verge. Uh, so it's just a photo looking northwards along the highway, so the footway will be on the left, and that looks looks up towards the, the entrance on the right. Uh, this is the entrance to the school and the entrance there to Hale Kaipush. That's just a photograph of the existing school. So you'll note that the new school is um, is taller and larger in scale, um, albeit you'll see from the report that as officers, we're happy that the separation distances with neighbouring properties are such that that's not going to cause any adverse effects in terms of you know it being overbearing, overshadowing, overlooking, that kind of thing. Uh, and this is finally an aerial photograph taken, I think 2017, you'll see the adjacent residential development being built, just shows the context and the proximity of the parking area, which sits just north of the words play area okay thank you ian uh, right questions then um could we have the screen share off a minute vicky please while i'm just looking for questions thank you that's better yeah christine cave please christine okay. yes please yes yes um well as the member for uh colwinston it, i think it'd be wonderful for the children to have a new school uh, because the school that they're currently in, which is a church in Wales school, is falling down. It's an appalling state. Um, but it would be wrong for this committee uh, to pass the current planning because I don't believe, you know, and our late reps set out uh, from the highways um, exactly a number of problems. And it's not just, um, you know, the road safety issue here, as we discussed at the previous application. We have the added issue of uh, this school is going to be built on the site of the current school while the current school and the current school children and parents 
are still using the site. Um, there's, the site is a, a, the actual entrance, and this is a really great example for committee me members to note here, that the, some of the photographs we've seen sort of um, allude to this being a main road. It's not the main road, it's a quiet country lane, and it has, as you say at the moment, it has no uh, footpath. Um, the thought of increasing the traffic flow in this area where it's already used uh, extensively for ag large agricultural equipment, uh, pedestrians walking, and of which there has been an, a great increase during the COVID-19. Um, and, and people walk along that road, there's, there's no pathway. Uh, and when the school is operating as it currently stands, it's a very dangerous situation of which the community have spoken about consistently. And I'm not really satisfied that the plans that we have in front of us now will mitigate the danger to the children that are currently using the school while the new school is being built and then the children that will have to use the new school. So I am very concerned and I, I know that um, Ian did uh, cover briefly the re late reps but I you know I'd really like to hear him go through these late reps and, or uh, at least Michael Clogg give us some indication of the concerns that the Highways Authority have raised and how he believes they're going to be mitigated by the plans in front of us. Okay, thank you, Christine. I think Vicky would like to come in on this for a little bit. Vicky, would you care to? Yeah, that's fine. I was just going to offer to share the screen of the late reps unless members have already got them in front of them so that we can go through them and Ian can, and, or Mike can go through the points raised and then perhaps Ian can address them. Uh, if you just bear with me one minute, I can do that. OK, so hopefully you can all see the late reps now up on the screen. Mike, do you want to go through these? Um, yes, I'll, I shall try and go through. Um, perhaps I shall concentrate um, on some of the, the, the main perhaps concerns um, as a consequence of the uh, late reps. Um, so perhaps won't go through it word for word. Um, but we uh, we do have a concern over the number of parking spaces uh, that are being allocated uh, for staff, um, and we don't feel that that uh, complies with the or with the recommendations in the current SPG for parking. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, there is a concern that uh, because we're not catering for the uh, um, sufficient parking on site then there will be displacement of uh, staff parking either onto the highway or perhaps into the community centre car park uh, and the community centre car park will be or is proposed to be improved uh, to try and facilitate uh, drop-off arrangements um, for pupils in the uh, and pick up in the morning and afternoon however if those spaces are taken by displaced uh, staff parking then that will potentially cause uh, problems for an already limited um, limited uh, uh, facility uh, so we have uh, we have concerns over over staff um, uh, parking availability the other uh, main concern that we um, uh, that we have is uh, the lack of uh, drop off and pick up uh, facilities for the school children and again uh, um, in the parking SPG, uh, there are notes relating to educational establishments, uh, and that suggests that appropriate provision must be provided for parental drop off and pick up of children as dictated by local circumstances and any travel plan. Um, so, uh, at the present moment in time, um, there is no uh, Form well, there is a, a suggestion that there will be some provision within the community community centre, but that will probably not be able to cope with with all the drop off and pick up going on at opening and uh, closing times of the schools, and we will get um, uh, drop off and pick up occurring directly on the uh, frontage to the school on the uh, on the rural lane uh, serving the school site. Uh, and there is a concern that that will cause congestion and uh, and, and traffic uh, traffic uh, safety issues um, for the uh, for the children. 
uh, there is a suggestion that that can, could be mitigated um, with a one-way system, uh, albeit um, I think the school will currently try and operate a one-way system as it stands at the moment, uh, and that one-way system uh, is uh, not necessarily adhered to by all parents, and, and again, in itself, it does lead to uh, congestion and access issues. So. Um, the one-way system is not necessarily um, uh, going to provide all the answers to uh, to the current uh, issues or, or future problems uh, the school face. Um, the uh, the there's a, um, a footway proposed, as Ian has mentioned, on, opposite the uh, school site on the uh, on the main access road, um, and yeah, that that's uh, obviously a benefit to uh, to those uh, pupils that will be uh, walking to school. But unfortunately, that um, that uh, side of the road, which is a verge at the moment, is normally occupied by um, uh, parents dropping off and picking up on that verge area. Um, and there is a concern that the the footway will, uh, because it will be curved, it will either deter parents from dropping off uh, in that uh, in that location um, uh, and they will have to migrate elsewhere or what is more likely is that a lot of parents will bump up onto the footway uh, and then obstruct that that um, uh, that new provision um, uh, uh, which is uh, which is uh, not desirable so there may have to be some need for um, some sort of TROs considered potentially um, so uh, those those are the main uh, main concerns without actually going through uh, the um, the uh, late rep uh, word for word. I'm just trying to look through and see um, uh, see what else is in here. We do recognise that there is uh, um, uh, section 106 monies to make improvements to the community centre access. Uh, and uh, increase the parking capacity uh, within that area uh, to facilitate parent pickup and drop off and safely uh, allow parents to walk the children uh, to the to the school entrance and that is uh, something that we uh, you know, we are pleased to see um, but uh, you know I think there's still some concerns over the amount of drop off and pickup that will take place directly outside the uh, the school itself. Um, uh, I think um, that's uh, without going through everything. As I say, I think that's the, the, those are the main uh, main concerns, and I'm not sure if Ian's got anything uh, he might want to add. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mike. I think Ian would like to come back on a um, couple of points there. Th thanks, Mike. Um, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah. I mean. As the planning authority, it's our job to balance uh, balance all the consultation responses we receive and balance all the the merits of the application. Um, in this case, I'm sorry to say the the development does comply with the SPG because the SPG sets out uh, maximum parking standards. Um, the amount of parking spaces to be provided for staff is almost one to one. To provide any more would be one to one, and that would be the absolute maximum that would be required. Um, that's the opposite of what our parking standards seek to do. Um, that's not to suggest that zero would be acceptable, um, but it's, it's it's not correct to say that the parking standards are, are, are minimums because they no longer are that. Um, so uh, taking the, the, you know, the comments from Mike's team into account, we feel that parking which is almost one-to-one -one for, for, for teachers is acceptable and strikes a balance between providing enough but also not providing more and encouraging people to drive to site. Um, mm. in, ter in terms of um, drop off and pick up yeah as, as per the situation with Ruth it would be taking place on the highway as it does now. Um, it's a bit different to Ruth in that this this village has um, sort of I think from the, the, the plan in the report five or six points of, of access into it um, now there's, there's probably two different categories of people that are going to potentially have issues of congestion by the site. Those are people dropping children off and leaving, or those are people that live in the village that, that don't have any functional interest in, 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 in the school in, in the morning or the afternoon. Um, there's adequate options, in, in our opinion, for people to leave that village without having to experience congestion outside the school. It might be that the road past the school is the most direct way out of the village, 
um, but it's not the only way out. And um, if the development were to increase congestion, which it's quite possible it will, because it's, it's going to be more cars coming to, to school in, in all likelihood, that's not to say that it makes travelling out of the village an insurmountable problem, you know, in, in the morning peak time, and we don't we don't feel it would be. Um, at the moment, the school I don't believe functions with a an, you know an active travel plan such as that which is recommended by condition. Um, and again, I believe there is there is scope for um, drop off and pick up practices to be improved, um, you, know, it, you know, in conjunction with the school. Um, on the issue of the footway, you know, whether having curbs is a is a a bar to people stopping and parking is, is maybe a matter of opinion. I think most footways have a curb and they don't seem to stop people um, parking adjacent to them. Um, even if people did bump up onto the curb, is that worse than the existing situation where people pull over on the bridge? I, my own view, I respect Mike's opinion, but my own view, I would say no, it's not. And I think that there's a, a, a significant material benefit to be seen from the new footway and the new crossing point. And that is something which we've had to weigh in the mix of, of all the other issues. None of that is to dismiss the concerns raised by some of the residents, concerns raised by Mike, and they're all um, they're all valid planning issues that we should be considering. We should be giving close attention to. Um, but in our view, as planning officers taking everything into account, we don't feel that those issues are so significant that they warrant the refusal of the application. We feel that on balance, um, the benefits to be associated with that provision, that infrastructure, and the benefits to be associated with the um, with the new school they outweigh um, any issues of additional congestion that might that might occur. Thank you, Ian. Um, I've got Ben who wants to come in next, but I, I'd like to make a comment as well, um, just on what you just said, uh, Ian. Um, this is a, a, a very different scenario to Roos, and I could see teachers possibly coming in on public transport or even walking to work, whereas this is a very rural school. Uh, you're not going to get teachers walking or taking public transport to school and, and I think the minimum standard, um, well, they, they should provide a parking for every, this is only my personal view, but I, I, I think out in the countryside, it, it is totally different. There aren't many opportunities to, to do anything other than drive to the school, but I'll let Ben come in and we can debate this a little bit more later. Ben. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was going to say, having read the conditions and looked at conditions 12, 13 and 14, uh, I'm comfortable that we could perhaps uh, have some alterations that are suitable as the development is being finally signed off. And the principles are there. I think the policy decisions behind it make sense. Uh, so I would move officer recommendations. Thank you, Ben. Uh, any more questions or a second? Yes, Christine, you'd like to come back in. Just before uh, I let you back in, Christine, Eddie, were you um, showing then or not? I'll, I'll second. I'll second the. Okay, point. so Eddie seconded. Uh, and Andrew Parker showing, but um, I'll let Andrew in, Christine. I'll, I'll come back to you definitely soon, but you, seeing as you've had one go, I'll let Andrew in now. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, Chair. Um, the the rural nature of this is the chances of any teacher having to arrive other than by car is almost uh, beyond belief, uh, unless you actually live in the village, which is as long. And I think that condition could be strengthened to allow for a one for one, as in other words, 24 spaces as opposed to 18. Um, and if that could be incorporated, and I would take Ian or Vicky's advice as to how they would change it, then I could support the application. Thank you, Andrew. Is that possible, Ian? Yeah, I think it could be. I think there's there's probably areas of landscaping within the parking area which could be used for additional um, for additional parking. I suppose it's a balance, isn't it, between what's the um, what's the best use of space? You know, we're balancing visual impact and parking. I think that the condition certainly allows scope for an amended layout to be provided, um, which could increase parking there. Uh, I think just on the on the point of how to staff would travel to school, I, I agree it's highly likely most staff would. Just to say, it would only take two members of car, two members of staff sharing the same car. To, to, to reduce that need. Um, that's for members to decide whether they feel that that's likely that any members of staff would 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 share. Um, I think it's probable that that, that could take that could take place. But if, if members are concerned, I think there is scope for the the parking to be uh, increased. Okay. Um, I I've got a query about a drop off area. Is there any scope for a drop off area anywhere there? Um, uh, you know, or, or an improved drop off area? For pupils, 
Uh, yes, for pupils. My understanding is not. Um, it, again, it, it would come down to the school. Um, my, my advice for my education colleagues is that schools generally aren't going to want the staff and parking areas and those circulation areas to be used as, as drop-off because um, they are um, it's, it's limited in, 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 in scope um, and if some parents come in um, and do it and then everyone comes in you might then get traffic back down to the road whereas if, if parents know that they're not entitled to enter that car park it's more likely they'll find a parking space on the highway in, in, in a safe way um, it would so it, it, it could take place but I wouldn't want members to be making a decision on the assumption that's going to because it's not something I could guarantee okay thank you Ian um, I, I just got a concern again I know the road very well and and you know if you've got uh, being a farmer, trying to do business down these country lanes, if you if if you're all clogged up there, especially it's it's not so much drop off time, it's pick up time, when the parents are waiting and generally they're there for 15 minutes beforehand, so you've got a period of about half an hour when there's a lot of cars there, and that that's my concern is is pick up time, and and people trying to use the lanes during that pick up time. And I'd be a lot more comfortable with this if there was some improved drop-off area or pick-up area. But um, anyway, who would like to come yeah. in can now? I, can I just say, <laughs> Chair, I mean, if you look at the photographs, and I know the site as well as you do because we've visited many times, um, they're quite fortunate there. There's actually a considerable amount of space in front and on the other side. And I think a rationalisation, and I'm looking at Mike at the moment, on the the road itself, even uh, because it looks to me as though there might be six or seven meters at least between the fence of the school and the edge of the highway, and I would have thought it wouldn't be beyond uh, difficulty to actually put a, a continuous layby or an improved situation whereby cars could park there while they're waiting before, uh, rather than blocking up the main highway, which we all know is too narrow at that point. OK, thank you, Andrew. Um, Christine, I, I can see you waving and, and I want to give you every chance as local member to come in on this and maybe make some suggestions and proposals. Christine. Are you unmuted, Christine? I can't hear you. Oh, there we are. There we are. I'm That's unmuted. Better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I just want to say uh, this is a really challenging site in terms of uh, children, t uh, staff, parents accessing and leaving the site. And again, I, you know, I don't want to bang the drum about site visits, but it, members would be able to have a really good understanding of how difficult this site is. You know, for, for us as a committee, our major concern is road safety and the safety of the people that are going to use the school. And uh, with the vast increase in traffic, and uh, over the next year, the vast increase in, in road traffic, uh, while they build the new school, I think we're faced with a number of challenges here. And I cannot understand why our planning officers are not listening to our highways department, who are the experts here. They've made very good late representation, and I think all of it should be taken on board. You know, there's been points made about this is a rural area. There is no bus service. Yeah, I can't imagine anybody walking, any teacher, unless they actually live in the village, and I think that's really highly unlikely. I can't see anybody, you know, being able to access this school other than by car and, and the very full, a few number of, of, of children that will use it from the village. I know that there is no, um, that there's no data on who uses this school and by, by what means they access the school. So we're faced with a lot of challenges here in this application and I do really think we should listen to our highways officer. Thank you, Christine. Ben Gray, you'd like to come in. Yeah, Chair, I was going to suggest um, we had a previous application where there were some details of uh, condition which I think the whole committee felt could have been altered, um, which was then given delegated authority to be sort of signed off and agreed with local members. I think it was in Dinner's Powers. Um, and I if Eddie Williams was happy to agree to second it, I would alter what I'm moving to suggest that the ability to amend those conditions as is suitable, bearing in mind these are late representations from highways and they haven't had a chance to maybe fully account how the conditions could change. I think I'd agree the principle in principle and leave the ability for the conditions related to these issues 
to be amended in um, coordination with the local member. Uh, I think we've done it before, and, and I'd be comfortable proposing that if Eddie's happy to second that. Eddie, are you happy to second that? Yeah, I, I yeah. think so. Um, the only concern is that as long as it is for, I, I wouldn't like it to be used as a, a reason to uh, object to the planning application. We recognise that, it, as Christine said, there are um, challenges to it, but I think it should be up to the officers to agree that and it, it becomes safe and under planning terms rather than one member having that deciding vote. Yeah, OK, let's see what Vicky's got to say on this, because obviously it's a very difficult situation we're in here. Vicky. I just want to clarify what members are voting on and talking about here in terms of this amendments to conditions, because I think um, thinking about where we've done this in the past, it's where we have left, we've through condition have required details to be submitted. And it's those details that have um, been consulted on with local members. So, for example, a, a traffic management plan, that sort of thing, um, rather than the wording of the actual condition being a matter of toing and froing between members and officers, which I think could be very technical in the extreme and get us in quite a difficult position. So what I would suggest if members want to go down that route is say we're looking at uh, condition number 12, I think it is, which is the on page 47, if members got that to hand. Uh, condition number 12 uh, relates to prior to the first beneficial use of the school and notwithstanding the submitted plans, further details of the parking layout and cycle store shall be submitted to and approved in writing, including full details of road markings within the site, signage and tracking plan. So that is about the issue to do with staff parking that I think members have been debating. You know, we could, for example, uh, through uh, the um, your recommendation this evening say that the details to be agreed under that condition are first consulted on with local members um which is similar to what we've done before and i don't know if members want to point to any other particular conditions where you feel that would be helpful to do that i just i think that might be the easiest mechanism for dealing with what you're suggesting if that's okay Vicky, like, can I was, uh, andrew give me a second here hang on hang on I, i've got to ask ben and eddie are you happy that we do that because it's your proposal. I guess what I'm trying to achieve is that uh, there are some details here. There is a feeling in the committee about wanting to uh, increase uh, some of the parking that's available. There's a suggestion from the planning officer that's possible. Um, and I think that the conditions are suitably broad enough to encompass the ability to increase parking. Um, and so a I, I guess I'm proposing, I'm happy to accept the, the wording uh, Vicky suggests. Um, if the consultation with the member is taken into account um, to avoid the entire application having to come back to committee, but I think uh, maybe if there's a, a language in there about one-to-one -one on staff parking, maybe that would just, um, you know, belt and braces it. Does yeah. that make sense? Okay. Uh, Eddie, you okay with that? We'll we'll get agree, some exact I word in which that. we'll all agree yeah. in a minute. And Andrew, you wanted to come yeah. in. All I was going to say to give everybody confidence, rather than the, the saying um, first beneficial use of the school, it would be probably preferable to say prior to commencement of construction, so everybody knew that the car parking issue had been resolved before it started on site. And I, I think that we've done that many times before, and that's the safest way, because otherwise we might be looking at this in 18 months after construction, and you never know what will happen. So that's yeah. my um, suggestion. Yeah. OK. Um, John, yeah, can you yeah. come in? It's Neil. Sorry, Neil, yes, it's I can Neil. hear you. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't sort of put hands up or anything like that, because uh, I haven't got that on my phone. Um, yeah, can I just say I I I I, I, I agree with, with, with the last comments. Uh, there's a consensus within the committee, by the sound of it, that we are concerned about the lack of parking within the site. If we wait for the uh, uh, for the thing to be built and for first beneficial use, we'll be stuck with a, a fait accompli where people will be able to see around and say, well, there's no room anyway now. Um, so perhaps we need to go along with, with, with Andrew's suggestion, recommendation, 
uh, right. of, of saying that we do it before commencement of build. Right, thank you, Neil. Let's have a little chat. We we'll want to see more parking. Now, guys. Um, I can see Christine wants to come in as well. Quickly, Christine, obviously, you're the local member. I'm, I yeah, want your input on this. Yeah, uh, yeah be as brief as I can. For me, it's, it's a wider issue than just the car parking. It's the traffic management plan here for the safety of the site. Yeah, I don't quite know how we can encompass that into an uh, agreement as well, but we will do our best. Let's see see now how um, Vicky and Ian would like us to proceed with this. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We can um, we can amend the condition. We can amend the trigger. The reason why the trigger was was as was was if we were if you were approving the uh, layout broadly as as was the, the, uh, as set out on the plan, there would be no reason for the, the later trigger being a problem. I agree. If we look, if, if potentially something slightly more fundamental is to be looked at, it is better to have an earlier trigger. Um, if members want us to investigate the uh, you know the area outside the site to the west, even though that's not in the site, that can be done because it's land within the control of the council, a bit like the land on the west the west side of the road um so yes we, we can certainly do that um we can maybe reword it um to strengthen it in terms of traffic management if members would give would get more comfort from that um just to reassure um councillor cave hopefully and, and members it, it really is not a case of us ignoring the high-risk comments i mean if you appreciate the timing of um the report being written and the timing of the high-risk comments this, this report was written before those comments so this report has not been written in, in spite of objections and um and whilst um mike will have his views on what the appropriate amount of parking is he, he's fully entitled to and that's his job to um and i wouldn't expect mike to take any other line than what is absolutely the optimum in terms of parking um and i, and I don't disagree with him in doing that again as i said with with the situation in Ruth, this is a, a balance for us with with the, the, the planning officers and um, we receive the high-risk concerns we go to our education colleagues and with those concerns and it's then up to our education colleagues applicant as to whether they want to change the plans or not if they're not minded to change them we still have to make a balance a balanced decision as to whether this application should be refused planning permission or not that's not to say that the high risk concerns are ignored dismissed marginalized or um or not given any weight they, they really are um it's just it's a very difficult balance in these situations to try and um re realize a situation which which suits everybody and is acceptable in planning terms is acceptable in terms of delivery of educational facilities um and, that, and that's why that's why we arrived at that balance um hopefully I, I hope Mike is aware that we're not just dismissing his comments when we uh, we, we recommend something for approval when, when there are some concerns being raised. Okay, yes, thank you, Ian. I think perhaps if the education department did a little bit more communication with highways, perhaps prior to design, we wouldn't be here. But anyway, we have to get through this. Um, Sorry, and I just... I'm, I'm, I'm going to, Andrew, hang on a second now. Okay. Uh, can, can I ask Vicky to try and give us an accurate wording? for the proposal um, because we all need to be clear on what we're voting on here so I'll, I'll let Vicky have a little think and see what she can do that's fine I was going to suggest can you hear me all yes great okay I was going to suggest that we amend condition 12 to prior to commencement of construction of development of the school um, and notwithstanding the submitted plans further details of the parking layout to include at least one-to-one -one parking for teaching staff and cycle store together with other traffic management plans shall be submitted to approved um, by the local planning authority and then same same as it currently is so it just gives that broader scope for us to have those discussions with education and highways to look at opportunities for further parking inside the site look at opportunities for drop-off and to try and address some of those concerns and then um, we wouldn't amend the condition itself to reflect members' um, desire to be consulted on that. That would be a matter for the minutes of the planning committee and for our records um, to ensure that we do that when we come to discharge that condition. Great. That, that sounds um, like we have a solution. Andrew, you, need to, you want to come in? Yeah, it, it's really being belt and braces. Uh, Vicky or, or Ian, uh, 14, it says, prior to the, the school being occupied by more than 140 pupils. I mean, obviously, when you get to 140 pupils, somebody's going to start putting that footpath in. And to be honest, from what I've heard, bearing in mind the cost of the whole development, that, that uh, footpath should be put in 
as of day one as part of the traffic management plan rather than wait until 139 are there and 140 arrive. Um, yeah, Ian. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the reason for that was um, because that's the number of pupils that are entitled to be in, enrolled at the, the existing school. Um, so, with, as with any planning condition, we have to be ensured that the um, they're necessary and reasonable, and that the requirements aren't more onerous than should be the case. If we have an existing school there with 140 pupils, it may be hard to argue that you need to have additional infrastructure when there's less than that there, just albeit in a new building, because in, in, theoretically the, the impacts are going to be no worse um, until you're up to 140. It, the condition is not worded to suggest that at 140 you then start building it. Obviously the council's um, education and, and highway sections in delivering it will, will need to be responsible for ensuring that the timing is such that it's there before it gets past 140. So work to deliver it would need to start before that. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly how far before because that would that would depend on um, you know in, figures that education have about you know when when they would expect that school to be fully enrolled. My understanding from um, from from education is that actually they would expect it to be uh, occupied to more than 140 from the outset. In which case, it is at the very beginning that 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 footway would be put in. Um, the, the the trigger as 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 word is just. It, for the scenario where, the, where it's not, to, to make sure that it's not overly onerous, but I, I think in all likelihood it would be going in at the outset anyway. Okay, thank you, Ian. Uh, ben, you wanted to come in, and I think after that, then I'm going to move to a proposal and a vote. It was to confirm I'm very happy with Vicky's rewording, and that would be acceptable as what I am moving, and hopefully Eddie is seconding still. Got a thumbs up from Eddie. So I will move to a vote now then. Uh, and same drill, I'll come down the list. I'll ask Councillor Ben Grave and his vote first. Uh, four so officer recommendations as amended. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Councillor Rhiannon Birch, please. In favour. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Christine Cave. Four officer recommendations as amended. With the amended. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Councillor Pamela Drake. Four officer uh, recommendations with the amendments. Thank you. Councillor Driscoll, Vince Driscoll. Uh, four officer recommendations with. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah four. I, you, you, you guys don't have to say it. It is, yeah, I've written it on the piece of paper as well. Uh, so, all I need is a four, four yeah, against. Um, so, Stuart, please. I'll go and meet you. recommendation. Uh, Stuart, uh, we haven't got Nick Hodges. So, Ian Johnson, please. Four. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Gordon Kemp, please. Four. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, Andrew Parker. Four. Uh, Leighton Rowlands. Uh, four. Thank you, Leighton. Uh, Neil Thomas, please. Four. Neil. Uh, Margaret Wilkinson, please. Four. Margaret. Councillor Eddie Williams, please. <laughs> Someone's yawning. Four. Uh, Eddie, four. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mark Wilson, please. All the recommendations. Thank you. And Margarita, please. Four. Thank you, Margarita, very much. And I will vote four. So that is a unanimous vote. Thank you all. Now, I believe that brings us to the end of the agenda. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, thank you for attending. We will hopefully have some changes in legislation soon and be able to do things a little differently and maybe even have a proper committee meeting and site visits soon. Um, but watch this space, we will keep you informed. But I, again, I will say it, if you've got anything on the next agenda, please, if you've got any doubts, make your own effort to go and have a look. It is important that you know these sites. Uh, it does make a lot of difference. And then you could ask questions of the officers when you get back home, uh, if you've got queries. So um, it is a difficult time. It's very awkward for us all, but um, thank you all uh, for coming and attending. Thanks to the staff here, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Yes.